praise Father, Son, and Holy Post. Well, hello, friends. Welcome to our new episode of the Holy Post. Nice, Kevin. Look at Kevin's right on this. This is very exciting. What's even more exciting is that Kevin's wife is watching us right now. She tried to sneak in into the cathedral today just to see what you were going to say about her, you know? I know. I know. She's always watching, isn't she? she got eyes everywhere. She <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Shelley, as we know her, is you know, one of our preschool teachers, and you have to have eyes everywhere, don't you? To, yes, yeah. To do that, because I don't know how she does it, but let me just tell you, uh, it's impressive. We are here at Rosary Cathedral, and oh, it is such a gem, isn't it? Oh, I mean, our beautiful. cathedral, I mean, look yeah. at it. We're sitting here right in the, the main it's aisle. You can see the ceiling. It's, I, it's beautiful <laughs> up here, you know, and uh, we're just not, we're not telling, don't tell the bishop that we're filming this today in the cathedral, okay? Don't tell him. So we kind of snuck in a little bit. So we're here in Rosary Cathedral, and that cathedral, it is one of the most beautiful, literally, in our whole country. People come here for ordinations, and they go, this is in Toledo. I mean, people don't, you yeah. know, and it's that Spanish uh, plateresque style uh, inspired by Toledo, Spain. Totally do. Yeah, totally do. Uh, totally do. And so we are um, here because a big thing happened uh, a few weeks ago. And that was that Kevin Coulter, one of our parishioners, was instituted as an acolyte. It sounds painful, was it? <laughs> no, not at all. No? no? So what is this whole, because Kevin's studying to be a transitional deacon, and, you know, we got some wonderful transitional deacons. Our parish has been truly blessed. Um, I mean, my gosh, we have uh, some deacons that have been deaconing a long time. I mean, <laughs> as, I mean, a long time. Like, um, Deacon Bob Pluciniak, uh, he has been deaconing, well, he, he hasn't actually been deaconing quite as long, but he um, actually, I, he, I think, went to school with Moses. Moses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Deacon Bob, and then we got uh, Deacon Ken Dickey, who is celebrating 45 years of ordination. That's unbelievable. Deacon Dick Heben, 40 years of ordination. Uh, obviously, Bob is still very active, uh, even though he is, is technically retired. And then you've got our active deacons, Denny Sugar, and you've got Joe Malenfant, and you've got uh, Ed Ireland. I mean, and they're just, they're good guys, but we always need all more. Very supportive. We all need more. Um, and so the transitional diaconate has, or not the transitional, the permanent diaconate, because uh, if it was going to be transitional for you, that would mean you were going to be a priest. Right. I don't think Miss Shelley would be. No, I don't think they'll allow that. <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. So, uh, but the permanent diaconate is such a blessing here in our parish. And it's great, Kevin, that you have been going through this process. And tell us a little bit about this process to become a permanent deacon. I mean, this is, and what being instituted as an acolyte means and why it wasn't painful. <laughs> okay. Um, well, first of all, yeah, it started about, well, for me, it started a long time ago. Started, I was 19 years old. I was at St. Catharines and there was a deacon there and he got me involved, in, you know, lecturing and then we did some acting out of the gospel during masses and stuff. I was actually St. John the Baptist and wore, you know. Hums. Did you wear cam camel hair? Yes, and yeah, yeah. Did you really? Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. Do you still have that outfit? No. Oh, that's a shame. I would <laughs> love to take a picture of that and put that on the holy post. So yeah, he's like, to become, gonna, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so to become a deacon, you have to at least be 25 years old. Well, I was only 19. So by the time I came 25, I was married to Miss Shelley, or we got married when I was 25. And when you're 25 and you're married, you can't become a deacon. You have to wait till you're 35. Uh. So when I was 35, I asked Shelley and she says, no way, we got four young kids. <laughs> you think you're gonna have time to do that? And so uh, it wasn't until I returned about my young 50s that I, I started hearing the call again. It's a calling just like it is for the priest. Absolutely. Because you, know? so, you are ordained a deacon. I mean, it's, yes. it's ordination. Yes. It is ordination. Yes, so I um, talked to Father Keith at the time mm -hmm. and uh, he told me about some meetings they were gonna have and uh, I think they're, they're having some right now um, mm -hmm. in 
in October. So if you're interested, that's a good one meeting to go to. I think it was the one we went to. Uh, I dragged Shelly around along and we found out that wasn't the meeting she was supposed to go to. There was about 80 men there. 80 <laughs> men and Shelly. <laughs> so we really are supposed to do some of these uh, Mysterium classes and they do them online. Um, <clears throat> we didn't, I had um, started investigating, it was like December and you're supposed to have your application in, in, in January and we had some miscommunication. Um, I thought Shelly didn't want me to do it. And uh, so I didn't put my application. She says, oh no, what do you mean? Don't blame me, she says, you put that in. So I was in a rush to get it all done within, it was supposed to be done by the end of January. It was like a week before the end. So they gave me two weeks to get all my, you have to get your, you know, your baptism certificates, your, you know, where all your sacraments are at. So, and I moved around. So I was baptized in Mass in Ohio. I made my confirmation in Newark, Ohio, or no, Yes, and uh, so they had to go to all these churches and get these. So the diocese documents. had divine Different mercy diocese. on you for not uh, getting it in on time. Huh? And then, and then you have to go through um, psychological, uh, six-hour psychological. Boy, testing. how did you pass that? I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> the same way I did. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, how long of a process, though, is this? So, it's about a five-year process. There's and you do what, once a month for yeah. a weekend? So, start, yeah, you're, we, for four years, you go once a month to the Pines. Uh, Friday, kind of Fremont, right? In Fremont, Ohio, for Friday night, Saturday, all day, and Sunday morning. Wow. Uh, That's I a think the first year was just Friday and Saturday. But then after the second, the second yeah, because they teach you guys all sorts of things. Oh, we yeah. don't want stupid deacons, you know. You don't want stupid priests. You don't want stupid deacons. And so we gotta, we gotta learn, and we gotta, you know. And they practice with you on homilies, and they do all this type of stuff, and you know, all these things. So nonetheless, there's a lot. And part of this, there's some liturgical steps uh, in this process, and one is called becoming, acolyte. yeah, instituted as an acolyte. So, so now the bishop has instituted you. What do, what, what is this? We are assistants to the deacons. Um, so in anything we've been, the, the previous years we were installed as um, lectors and we were installed as, as ordinary Eucharistic communities instead of extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So if anybody would, if you're up on the altar and there would not be someone, then you would distribute. Because at the acolyte, the, the bishop hand, he holds on to uh, <clears throat> container of the bread, not mm -hmm. it's not been consecrating until it, and they ask you, you know, you're, you're going to take this to your community and, and um, you know, bread like Yeah. That. Oh my so. gosh. So yeah, you'll be seeing Kevin up on the altar a little bit more. We want to get him up there and uh, get him used to being up there. And uh, again, you can purify the vessels and you can do some different things like that and uh, be the, um, be the, or, uh, 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 the a Eucharistic minister, a distributor that uh, um, that's that's doing that, um, all sorts of different things liturgically, uh, because the ministry of the deacon, there's a lot of liturgical to it, but obviously there's a lot of service components too. And so, like I think about Deacon Bob, he takes communion to all sorts of different people. So that's one of the ways he serves. I think about uh, Deacon Denny, and he does a lot with uh, marriages, and that's kind of how he serves out into the community. Uh, I think about Deacon Joe Malenfant, and we're not really sure still what he does, but I'm sure, you know, there's something good there. Uh, you know, and all these different things. Ed Ireland baptism goes to the classes, prison, they baptism they classes. Oh, <laughs> that is one thing, yeah, he does. Uh, I think a deacon Ed going to prisons, does yes. a lot of prison ministry. And so all these different things that our deacons do, and it's awesome. And it's awesome. And so we're very excited for you, Kevin. Uh, it, ordination is next September 21st. Um, now, one thing I admire about Kevin but I also find extremely weird is the fact that he is a runner. He runs for fun. That's weird, Kevin. Talk to me about that. Well, stand up. I we can here. Let's See, here. So we, I, I'm a runner, and he's not a runner. I, so <laughs> what happens, my dear friends, is this here. That is a temple of the Holy Spirit. 
This is a cathedral, okay? <laughs> and so you take your temple and go, Kevin, and this cathedral, or major basilica, uh, for that matter, uh, is one of these things. But Kevin likes to run. I don't hold that against him, okay? Uh, but as I always tell people, if you see me running, you better run too, because something bad's happening, okay? But Kevin likes to run, he cro uh, coaches cross country, right? I've coached cross country for 21 years. Wow, that's awesome. This yeah. year I'm just, uh, I'm, I just joined him on Monday nights, so. Okay, right cool. Farms, so we're having... Yeah, so you'll be seeing, uh, you'll be seeing Kevin around even more and we're excited to have him. So many things going on in our parish. I'm excited this coming Friday is the blessing of animals uh, in honor of St. Francis of Assisi. Even though I don't like animals, I'll still bless them. Uh, so you can bring any animal. I had a little kid today say, oh, Father, I got my turtles I'm bringing on Friday. So that's at uh, 245 in the back parking lot. Uh, Miss Shelley, she's bringing her cat. Miss Shelley, are you bringing your cat? <laughs> no. You're not bringing your cat. No. What's your cat's name? Boomer. Boomer. Well, Boomer's been blessed. He's a blessed Boomer. Uh, and then we have uh, that night, Friday night, 6.30, uh, Praise and Worship Adoration. Deacon Joe is leading that. And then on Sunday is our life chain. And so there's a prayer service um, for the protection of the unborn uh, at 1.30 in the church, and then followed by the life chain, which is uh, standing there on Conant Street, uh, down by the bridge and over the bridge into Perrysburg, uh, standing up for that cause of life. So, so many things going on. Uh, our church is uh, we're just is continuing to be full of life and full of love um, to the point that we're even looking at Boy, how do we um, expand our capacity? What do we do? Uh, because we have we have a lot of people coming, um, a lot of people That's coming, good. especially at the nine and the eleven. So it's good to have uh, those of you back who are back, and uh, again, we look forward to having more back as we uh, continue forward. But um, we want to make sure that we're praying for Kevin and all of the yes, permanent you. deacons that uh, are in formation, um, and uh, very excited for all you guys. So thank, thank you for you. being with us today uh, here pleasure. in Rosary Cathedral, this gem in our diocese, uh, the seat of the uh, the bishop, Bishop Thomas, uh, where his cathedra is. And certainly we're blessed uh, to have this in our diocese. So uh, we pray uh, for all of you. I'm praying for you and can't wait to, uh, to see you in church and other places like that. So take care and God bless. And let's conclude, since we're in our cathedral, makes sense we conclude with a Hail Mary because right. obviously Our Lady Queen of the Most Holy Rosary. So let us pray in the name of the Father, Father Son, Son, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace the, Lord the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We better get out of here before the bishop finds out that we're in here. Okay, let's go. Here we go.